I think often we get, we sort of think that music is this skill that you, um, that some people have and some people don't, uh, which now science is, is starting to say, well, that that's kind of sh- shaky. That's shaky ground now. Um, it appears to be something that's, I mean, it, the kind of, the jury's still out. It's not, there's there's new sort of studies that are, are done all the time and it's a really interesting field at the moment um but yeah it appears to be that that music um it's it's more we know it's a, a skill that's kind of learnt but there there are kind of base level things that everyone has um which then brings into question like whether music um came before language or musicality came before language um so you have things like so to give some context you've got like the oldest known uh human instrument is a bone flute that dates back to about forty five thousand years which is a long time but to add more context to that the the first kind of um evidence of or presence of language is about a hundred thousand years ago um but then of course a bone flute that dates back to 45,000 years ago is just the first thing that has managed to survive. So singing and clapping, there's no evidence in the you know fossil record or whatever of, of that. So you have to expect that it goes back further than that. Um, so then you have different sort of outlooks on where uh, or how deep music runs uh, in our evolutionary advanced so uh, darwin came up with the the first sort of uh idea which was that music was used for sexual selection so it's like a, you know in the same way that a peacock has a vast plumage and go look at me look at all this energy i can effectively waste yeah. on just looking damn good <laughs> yeah. um and then you know people people um well we find it attractive as well i suppose but um peacocks will find that attractive uh, and th- and so the same way that music is like it's a way of effectively wasting energy um, it's it's ornamentation, um, and so yeah. It's, so Darwin was the first to, su- to suggest, and it and it's just um, it's had quite a lot of uh, rethought now, and it's been um, a lot of science has, has, has started to uh, take that view seriously again. Um, but the and w- one that sort of another idea that's uh, interested me was more of the group selection idea, which is that if you go way way back um one of the main things that brought us together in in small tribes and uh you know very very small scale um human communities uh, would be social grooming um you know literal physically physically grooming uh, one another uh and as tribes got bigger and communities got bigger that's kind of impossible you can't go around and groom everyone every day and <laughs> keep that sort of sense of unity especially when language is incredibly primitive it's a, how do you sort of communi- communicate how do you have that connection with someone um and so music is is kind of suggested uh to have been the thing that sort of replaced that on when when communities got bigger um and of and music when i say music in this sense i mean it to include dance as well as do lots of languages and especially primitive languages um or old archaic languages um music and dance meant they they had one word for both both of those things um and music was very communal um and that that's that really interests me because i think we sort of lost well maybe not lost lost our way is is to a divisive way of putting it but like when you get into sort of the 17th 18th 19th centuries and you see music come out of sort of uh you know perhaps people going to the the pub and get gathering around the piano and everyone having a dance you know that um it then became slightly less communal slightly less um just in, involving everyone and it, it went into uh halls and you'd be sitting down watching a performance of baroque or classical or whatever else um and when you advance a bit further than that where sort of i get interested again is where you have blues and skiffle and pop and rock and punk where it's still a performance but it it involves audience participation it involves people singing along not just sitting there you know fanning themselves in a concert hall going oh isn't this beautiful (laughs) and you know there's there's space for that type of music certainly um that there's um i can argue for why that experience is important as well um but then yeah when music when music becomes 
uh, a reason for us all to come together, all to sing along, to tie this this whole prologue um, together. Um, that's when oxytocin is is central because as soon as you're singing with someone, you're releasing that chemical, which is dubbed the the love hormone, the the sort of bonding hormone. Um, it it's 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 a it's something that feels good basically so a, a way of connecting creating a, a very tangible um sort of chemical connection with someone is just to sing in harmony with or in unison with someone um and that's you know it's a, it's a beautiful experience it's a very sort of raw experience and that's um hopefully what music um which sort of what well, it sort of defines music as a unifying force um because it is, defines it as worthwhile. Because if, if it releases this this hormone, which is usually only released in orgasm, um, or when you hug someone, a bit of it is, is released. Um, if, if you're singing with someone and that's released without any physical touch, you can tell that music is a, a powerful force. Mm-hmm.